So if you don't know what a smoked chicken bomb is, let me tell you. It's a jalapeno stuffed with a cream cheese mixture, then that is put into a boneless, skinless chicken thigh, and then that is wrapped with bacon, and then that is smoked till it is absolutely delicious. So when I thought about doing a video for this, I wanted to make sure that this was going to be a different recipe than all the other ones. I wanted to try and bring this up to the next level. So hopefully this recipe does that for you, and it'll help you get a little more creative, and maybe you can even take this recipe and bring it up even further. So we have a bunch of work to do, so let's go right ahead and get started. So let's start with our filling. So I only have four chicken thighs, so I'm gonna do about a quarter stick of cream cheese. I may add more later. Next, you want some shredded cheese. I have some freshly grated Gouda here. Always use freshly grated when you can. So here I have some chorizo. I have gone ahead and I have cooked this. The reason I wanted to do that was to get all that excess grease and fat cooked out of this chorizo, because I didn't want it to be super greasy inside of this mixture. So I'm obviously not gonna use all this. I'm just gonna grab a couple of handfuls, throw it in there. I think that's just gonna add some fantastic flavor to this filling mixture. Like I said, I'm trying to up the level on these smoked chicken bombs. Now a little seasoning, and I'm using this Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse. I think this is going to be a great option for these because it has that awesome butter flavor in there. If you guys haven't tried this, be sure to check it out. I'll put a link down below. So I'm probably gonna do like half a tablespoon or so. Now just go ahead and get this all mixed up. I didn't mention it, but I left that cream cheese out at room temperature for about an hour or so. It's gonna make it a lot easier to get this mixed up. I think this will be just enough for the four that I'm making. So you can see this is a really nice mixture between the shredded Gouda, the cream cheese, and the chorizo. I really don't like to put too much cream cheese. I think you need a good mix between all three. So there is that. Let's get into the chicken. I know I said skinless and boneless, and you can buy it that way if you want, but I highly suggest just getting the bone in, skin on, butchering these yourselves. It is awesome practice doing chicken thighs. They're super easy, and it's a fantastic way to hone your butchery skills. Plus, you can take the bones and make a delicious chicken stock. So you can see the bone here. All I like to do is come right on top of that bone and kind of just score it so you can feel the edge. And then just work your knife around the bone. Then come to the other side and do the same thing. It's okay if you leave a little meat on the bone. So once I get the two sides done, I like to just come right underneath, follow that bone as I peel the bone up and away from the chicken thigh. Then just use the tip of your knife and work the meat off the end of the bone here. Some cartilage in there you gotta watch out for. Just gonna wanna make sure you get that out of there. And there you go. See there's a little meat on there, not that big of a deal. Go ahead, flip this over. Get the skin off, it's super easy. It kind of just wants to come right off by itself here. And then once you get it almost fully detached, just go ahead and trim the rest of it off. I like to leave a little fat on the chicken thighs, but something like that you could probably take off. And then there you go. Nice deboned, skinless chicken thigh, super easy. And then I just like to flatten it down a little bit so it'll make it a lot easier to get the jalapeno wrapped up in there. So I'm gonna go ahead, take the skin and bones off the rest of these and I'll see you when I'm done. All right, there we are, deboned, skin off. Like I said, you can definitely go ahead and just buy the boneless, skinless chicken thighs if you wanna go that route, it's a little easier. But like I said, these are a lot cheaper and it's always great to practice those butchering skills. But let's go ahead and get these assembled. Now we're gonna start with some jalapenos. And I went ahead and pickled some of these jalapeno halves because I wanna use pickled jalapenos for this instead of raw jalapenos. A few reasons for that. I love the vinegar taste that you're gonna get when you put them in here. And the other reason is I know if you put a fresh jalapeno in there, it's probably not going to cook enough to get tender, which isn't a problem because it's nice to have a little bit of a crunch inside there. But these are gonna be a little softer and they're gonna have some fantastic flavor. Now you can look up a pickling recipe. It's super simple. It's gonna be 50-50 water and white vinegar, some sugar and a little bit of salt, and then just steam that on the stove for a little bit and then just dump it right into here and let it sit in the fridge for however long you need. So let's get these out and we'll start filling them with that filling. Now I'm gonna use two halves per chicken. And what I want to do is just pat them off and get them as dry as possible. 
All right, so I got the jalapenos, enough for the four chicken thighs. Now I have only been pickling these for a couple days, so they still do have some firmness to them. If you let these go longer, they'll get softer, but I think this is gonna be perfect for these. So let's go ahead and get them filled up with that cream cheese. So just put a good amount of that cream cheese in here. Then get your other half, put that together. And there is one nice cream cheese filled pickled jalapeno. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill the rest of these up. So I've already got all the jalapeno stuffed and I can already tell that these are probably going to be a little big for these chicken thighs, but I'm gonna do the best I can and that's why we have the bacon to seal this whole thing up. So I'm gonna get my chicken thighs down and I wanna see what I'm dealing with because some of these are smaller than the others. So it looks like we have a couple big ones and a couple small ones that's gonna work good because I got one big jalapeno here and I think we're gonna go on this one here. Got a small guy there. Another small one there, and the last one here. Let's move these to the side, and I'm gonna try and get this one all wrapped up. I don't think it's gonna fit. All right, so this one's a little too long, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim the end off of here. Don't worry, I'm gonna eat this for sure. I'm gonna throw that on the smoker. So I'm just gonna fillet this out a little bit, because I need this to be a little bit bigger here. I've never done this before, so as you can see, it's all new to me, but I think this is gonna do the trick. Just like that. Yep, and there we go. Nice chicken thigh, finally wrapped up. We just gotta get that in some bacon. It'll secure that nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these done, and I'm probably gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna flay these out, trim the edges, so we can get these finished up. All right, so that did take a little bit of work, but I got them all wrapped up. These are gonna be good. And since we're wrapping in bacon, it's really gonna help keep these together. Now, when you're doing bacon wrapped items, make sure to just get the regular thin cut bacon. This is what you want when you're smoking something wrapped in bacon. Now, I always like to pull the bacon a little bit, just get a little more length out of it. Let me move these out of the way. Start with this small one here. Now, I want all the seams on the bottom. So I'm gonna put half the bacon under the seam here. Gonna push that jalapeno right in the middle. I'm gonna wrap around the end of the chicken thigh here to just help keep the pepper and everything enclosed in there, just like that. Now, should be able to get another piece, give that a stretch, and this is going to get wrapped right around the opposite direction. I think we'll be good with two total pieces per chicken thigh. And you wanna try and get the end of the bacon on the bottom there. Then you can just shape it a little bit. And look at that. Does that look good? Let me just pick this up. And there you go. Nice little bacon wrapped chicken thigh filled with some deliciousness. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get these others wrapped up then we can get these ready for the smoker. So these are all finished, and I'm gonna say that these are not the easiest thing to do. These take some patience to get them ready like this, but I think all this hard work is gonna pay off because these are gonna be absolutely fantastic. Now, I got them on a grate here just to make it easier to go in and out of my smoker. I don't really wanna handle these too much because they're a little delicate, but all I wanna do now is just get these seasoned up. I've got this salt grass seven steak spice. I love this stuff. I'll put a link down below. This goes great on everything. And my favorite part about it, as you can probably see, is the color. This gives a beautiful color to any sort of meat that you put this on. It says it's a steak spice, but this is one of my favorite things to use on pork. It's also black pepper heavy, so I'm a fan of that. All right, all seasoned up, pits fired up. Let's go ahead and get these things on the smoker. All right, so today I'm using my Z Grills pellet smoker. This thing is absolutely fantastic. I have a full review on this if you want to check it out. It's a great video. But I got this thing set at 250 degrees. So let's go ahead and get these chicken bombs on. All right, since I got them on that grate, I can go ahead and just drop them right in. There we go. Just close this up and let these cook. So a lot of the recipes I found for the smoked chicken bombs was cooking these at around 300 degrees. Now I think that might be a little too hot because you're not gonna get a lot of smoke flavor. The lower temperature you cook something, especially on a pellet smoker, the more smoke flavor you're gonna get. 
and I know 250 degrees will be perfect for about an hour or so on these. Obviously it's not gonna get that bacon crispy, but it is going to allow the bacon fat to render down. Then after about an hour, we can crank our temps up a little bit, get that bacon nice and crispy, and we'll add a nice sauce to it after. So speaking of the sauce, let's go ahead and get that made now. Get a pot over medium heat, start off with a little bit of ketchup. Say about a quarter cup of ketchup here. To that, I'm gonna add a little bit of apple cider vinegar, maybe another quarter cup or so. All right, since we have so many salty elements to this chicken, I want this glaze to be nice and sweet. So here I have a little bit of red pepper jelly, about three tablespoons of that red pepper jelly. Now I just wanna go ahead and give this a little bit of a mix. And we wanna just start reducing this down. All right, I also wanna add in a little splash of some peach crown and a little bit for me. Mm. All right, so just continually keep mixing this up. We wanna bring it to a simmer and just let it reduce down. There's a few more ingredients I wanna get in here. I wanna add in some black pepper. I like to add a good amount into my barbecue sauces. Then I wanna go in with some crushed red pepper. The amount depends on how spicy you want it to be. Then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of oregano. Always love adding oregano to a barbecue sauce. And we'll give this another mix. See it's starting to bubble up, simmer nicely. Now I wanna add in a little bit of garlic powder. You can see it's really going now, but I wanna add in a little bit of mustard powder. So I'm gonna turn my heat down to about medium low, get this mixed up, but this smells fantastic. And we are almost done. I just got one more ingredient to add to this, and that is some of this Mike's Hot Honey. I love using this stuff. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons. I'm gonna make this glaze even nicer. So go ahead, get that mixed up. Now I'm just gonna let this simmer for probably about 20 minutes and let it reduce by maybe a third or so. So while this finishes up, let's go ahead and check on our chicken bombs. All right, one hour in on the chicken bombs. Let's give them a look. Looking pretty good. See the bacon's rendering down nicely. Getting a nice, beautiful crust on the outside of these things. So let me go ahead and just give them a temp check. We'll see where we are at with these. So you can see we're at about 147. That's pretty good. We obviously gotta get these to 160, but being chicken thighs, I highly recommend cooking these to around 180 degrees. That's really gonna let a lot of the fat render out. And you can see this bacon is not nearly as crispy as I would like. So let's close this up. And now we can crank this up to 325. So I'm just gonna let these keep going and I'll see you out here in about 30 more minutes. All right, so it's been 45 minutes and these are looking perfect. You can see that bacon is rendered down beautifully. Check these out, man. These do look like chicken bombs. These are going to be so good. So what I wanna do here is turn my smoker down to 250 degrees. Actually, let's go 225. So we'll get a temp check on here just so you know where we're at. You can see we're at almost 200 degrees, 202. Like I said, these can take the heat because they're chicken thighs, plus they're wrapped in all this bacon. So don't worry about taking these up to such a high temperature. All right, so here is that sauce. Get that down and you can see how beautiful this glaze is gonna be. Very pepper heavy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glaze up these chicken bombs. This sauce smells so good. I can smell it dripping down. This is going to be the perfect combination with these chicken bombs. I can already tell. I'm super excited about these things. They're already looking so good, and this sauce is just gonna make them even better. 
So we get a nice coating, try and cover the whole thing. So I'm gonna let these go at 225 for another half an hour. And I'm gonna glaze these in another 15 minutes. But once these are done, I will see you inside and we will see how they taste. All right, so our smoked chicken bombs are finished. I let them go for another half an hour, like I said, sauced them twice. Now, throughout the cook, I was a little concerned, especially when prepping these, that they were going to stay together on the smoker, but these came out absolutely beautiful, and that glaze worked out fantastic. These have such a nice color. Let me give you a little bit of a close-up. Just check that thing out. That is a beautiful looking piece of barbecue right there. And I can see why they call these the smoked chicken bombs. Because if you shape them right, they're going to have that nice round look to them. But I'm super excited to give these a try. So let me cut one of these open and we'll see how it looks in the middle. So I got this one right here. Go ahead, get it right down the middle. And here we go. Check that out. Perfect, I would say. I let these cool off for about 10, 15 minutes to make sure that that filling would not ooze out when I cut it. See the bacon is rendered down nice. I'm getting a fantastic smell from that filling in there. Chicken is cooked perfectly. I'm super excited about this. Now, as usual, I would love to just give this a try right now, but I gotta go ahead and take some pictures. So I'll be right back. All right, we are back. One of the hardest thing about making videos is you have to just look at the food and you can't taste it. You just have to smell it. You take nice pictures of it. It is just torturous, but I am super excited to try this out. So I'm gonna go ahead, slice a piece off, give it a try, and we're gonna see how this thing came out. I'm gonna get a nice piece from here. And that is perfect. Nice little beautiful slice right there. Here we go. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Really, just wow. That is an amazing piece of barbecue right there. I think that is a perfect mixture of salty, savory, sweet, the vinegar. It is absolutely delicious. There are so many different layers of flavors in here. It is hard to pinpoint them all. You have that nice chorizo with the buttery steakhouse, which you can taste in there. Gouda cheese is amazing in there. And the thing that makes this so good is that pickled jalapeno. It is not that spicy at all. I think most of the spice on here is coming from that crushed red pepper I put in the barbecue sauce. And speaking of that sauce, it is nice and sweet and has a fantastic flavor that goes so well with all the different flavors in here. I really highly suggest giving this a try. You need to do the pickled jalapeno though. It is nice and soft and that pickled flavor goes so well with all these ingredients. It is a match made in heaven. I have to have another piece. Mm -hmm. The bacon is cooked perfectly. That slow cook at 250, then the crisp is the way you want to do bacon when it's wrapped around something. It almost becomes one with the chicken. It kind of acts like a chicken skin. You wouldn't really know the difference. This is absolutely amazing. And that chicken is still super juicy. You saw that we brought it up to around 200 degrees. That is perfectly fine with a chicken thigh, especially since it's wrapped in bacon. That thing's not gonna dry out. You want to break down that meat. It is nice and tender. Highly suggest giving this a try. And if you can level this up even further, let me know. Now, I'm going to put a link to everything I used in my video down below. So be sure to check that out. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe right over here. And if you want to see another one of my barbecue videos, you can check this one out right over here. But most importantly, get out there and smoke something good. Mmm, spicy bacon, so good.